Yeah, if we are talking about Africa, so Africa, it's a European uh, concept. It's not a local concept at all. We can just just erase from from memory and talk about, I see the relation between Africa and it began in 19th century with colonial explorations. But it's not true. In as early as 16th century, you know, there were African bodies being shipped from the continent to the new world, right? So the very beginnings of capitalist modernity is rooted actually in African people's bodies and so on. Growing up in Nairobi in the 70s and 80s, we were watching the same TV shows and a lot of the same films that kids in the West are watching. Middle class kids were experiencing a lot of the same things as kids in the West. And, and the thing that it took a while to understand is a lot of these films had nothing to do with us. There was no, none, I mean, there's virtually no representation of us young African urban kids in any of these films. A lot of them were predominantly white actors. A lot of them, if they were um, people of color or um, African or black, were very different from our experience in our life. So um, as, I think as an artist, you start to investigate these very the, lovely minutia of culture and go, well, why, why is this? And, where am I in this story? We live in a material world in which the things we see determine what our, shape our expectations. And that's the thing. So in the art world, if I go back to that model, if I keep going to the museum and only seeing white bodies in pictures when I go to the museum, then I don't expect to see black bodies in the museum because then I don't think they belong there. But if I make black bodies and those black bodies end up in the museum too, and you come to the museum and I go to the museum, I see black bodies, I see white bodies, I see Asian bodies, I see Latino bodies, then I don't have this, then when I go to the museum, I expect to see those kinds of things every time I go. That matters a lot. The aesthetic of what's um, beautiful for women, also what's professional, um, is very narrow. So if you're supposed to have your hair straightened, and if you do have curls, it has to be the very loose, um, accessible kind of curls. And when you're, when you're born black, your hair doesn't grow like that from your head. <laughs> so you spend a lot of time trying to make it look like that. And while you're spending all that time, you're also internalizing society's message to you that your hair the way it is, that something is wrong with it. I think what the colonial process does or any process of domination is, first of, all, first of all, the erasure or the memory of the subjugated, right? You literally erase the memory of who they are, their memories of the past, the memory of their being, you know, as a people. So by, after erasing that memory, you plant another memory the memory of the colonizer or the memory of the one who's dominating. I wrote this article, Bye Bye Babar, or mm. What is an Afropolitan, considering the identity of a group of African people whose connection to some place or some places on the African continent is eternal, mm. and who also experience a very hybrid identity, a very global way, if you will, of seeing and of being in the world. I wrote this essay because I myself felt shut out from various identities, American, mm. British, Ghanaian, Nigerian. No one ever seemed to be satisfied by my claims of being one or the other or a combination of the four. <laughs> and so I thought to myself, well, there must be some alternative that I'm missing. And Afropolitan was my way of conceiving of that alternative. In a world in which the notion of Equality is supposed to be the dominant model and that everybody's supposed to have equal access to an equal cap capacity. We don't still see a world that has that kind of equality yet and that everybody is represented at the table or represented in the museum. We don't see a world that's like that yet. I, Taye, as I, as I exist today, I, I go to Ghana all the time. I go to Nigeria less frequently because it's a bit crazy, but you know, I go. I will travel across the continent for this project and I will do it as I am now. There's no going back. There's only going forward.